Okay, I'll call the board to order. Well, the thousands of people that have been kind enough to join us today. Um, the, um, the Zoom will not be monitored. Participants who wish to speak must raise the uh, hand icon until the chair asks them to... Uh, Recording in progress. Okay, okay. The Zoom will not be monitored. Participants who wish to speak must raise their hand icon until the chair asks them to uh, unmute. Uh, note that this meeting is being televised and recorded by Bourne Community TV for replay. If anyone in the audience is also recording or videotaping, they need to acknowledge such at this time. All items within the meeting agenda are subject to deliberation and vote by the Board of Health. Do any of the people here intend to, I don't see any hands raised, so I'm going to assume that they're not. Uh, okay. Um, and everybody knows that they can use the Zoom meeting ID and password that's given on the internet, uh, on the online agenda to go forward. Uh, meetings call to order for attendance. Um, Barbara Prince Otter is here. William Meyer is here. Bob Collette is here. I'm here, and Dawn is not. Okay, uh, I declare the presence of a quorum. The first item on the agenda, discussion and comments from the board in response to the invitation for input and feedback regarding the proposed draft of the revised Town of Bourne Financial Management Policies document from the select board. Gentlemen and ladies, um, you have been sent this document uh, and uh, I would entertain information with regard to your opinion. Do you have questions for the select board? And I would hope that you would record these and if there are questions that we, you would pass that on as, uh, as evidence that we actually discussed it. Barbara? I don't really have any questions on it. Um, I did look at it. Um, okay. You know, I, I definitely don't because I don't understand one ounce of it to be honest. Oh, it's so much fun though when you go through this and you see all of the things that would be you know, being considered and thought about. I've got a hundred bucks in my pocket and that's the best I can do. Other than that, I have no idea where. <laughs> okay. No, I and, took that out of your pocket. Shit. Um, no. Just, uh, <laughs> Just curious as to how it directly applies to, to us. Well, I think I, I think what's interesting to me is that if it, there is a direct comment that does apply to us, and uh, if it goes and and I and I applaud, I applaud the inclusion because it says here, and I and under procedures. And let me read it. Only before September first of each year, the town administrator the town administrator, shall to transmit to all department heads, town boards, and committees. That would be us. Uh, the Bourne Public Schools, the Upper Cape Regional Technical School, is scheduled for submittal of annual operating budget and capital improvement plans request for the ensuing fiscal year. The schedule sh shall include a minimum of the following dates and elements, which you can, you can read at your leisure. However, the fact that uh, the, the policy says that we would be involved in such a, that would mean that we would have to be brought into the process at, you know, at, a, at an earlier time. And uh, I think that the potential for engagement and involvement in the budget process could be, you know, you know is very important for a board that, uh, that stands for election and, um, is expected to make promises to the electorate about whether or not they can deliver things that uh, are important to them. So in any case, I think that this is a piece of the public policy that deserves attention and, and perhaps could be expanded to uh, as say, include a higher measure of participation in the budget process going forward. Um, so that, that's my, and again, these opinions as expressed are my own, and, uh, and and we were asked to comment on it. So if you have anything further, uh, then uh, uh, 
is it March 19th? Yes. Okay, March 19th is the drop dead date for, you know, for giving opinions on it. Uh, the rest of the material, you know, when I reviewed it, um, had significant mention of budget and budget policy. And if the intent, in my opinion, of a financial management policy is to, let's say, is to support the creation of a balanced budget, then it's very important uh, that, you know, that, uh, you know, that you make that connection, you know, with regard to the, uh, with regard to the policy. Another piece uh, on, you know, on this is that, uh, um, is that uh, although there is a, a standard format, philosophically, um, municipal budgets uh, and financial management policies are intended, in my opinion, to give uh, the support uh, to the understanding that municipal and public budgets are to address expense issues, expense issues that uh, are intended to support the services that citizens expect, you know, from you know, let's say from their governing board, and uh, that uh, exceptions with regard to enterprise funds and things of that sort to generate, you know, more income uh, would be uh, would be chosen and supported on the basis of contributing <coughs> to uh, what I would call the operation. Uh, in, in, by putting money in the general fund with the hope that property tax might be reduced because there are inc other income sources that are supporting it. So with that, um, does anybody else have any, any other uh, comments? Just one thing. Sure. The way I understand it, we have no overseeing of salaries. That's to do with the town administrator. Budgets is awarded by the fi finance committee awards their oh, department. Make no mistake. I'm not saying or suggesting that we have anything to say about it because it is all of the all of these members are governed by a collective bargaining agreement. Correct. Okay, Indeed. and in that collecting collective bargaining agreement, the the person that has responsibility for negotiating those contracts and also uh, let's say uh, preparing the agreement for uh, say for uh, acceptance by the select board is the town administrator. Right. I'm not suggesting that at all. Okay. But I am suggesting that since they did mention that we are, you know, that we are part of the process, that, uh, that we be given some opportunity to, let's say, to understand how the elements are developed <laughs> and also to make, a, let's say, to make what I would call, uh, an, or take the opportunity to give an opinion with regard to the kind of choices that are made. Uh, You'll find that the the major expense in our budget uh, is uh, um, labor cost, and you'll find that over time. And I, I think, Barbara, with your experience in the in the uh, private sector, you'd support this. That the uh, the lower, if you can lower the labor cost in some way, you basically can, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, Increase the longevity of you know of you know of what you're trying to do, but you also you have to balance that with how much you know how much labor do you need in order to accomplish the objectives. Uh, I, I think that this would be an an issue that we might find out whether or not uh, there's any effort to do comparisons you know, with other communities of similar size, not necessarily just on the Cape, but let's say across the you know across the Commonwealth. And benefit from you know on how they how they're operating, and that would be to me an element within the budget process because all the other budgets that I've ever been involved with you know do, you know do have a what I'd call a comparative element involved in it. So the budget to me is the way we carry on our business, um, and although I in this job I am not a fiscal agent, uh, I. I do see something that came, you know, that came out of the review of this that perhaps there should be an orientation for members of boards so that they understand what the relationship is within the, say within this community as to how everybody is expected to uh, I'll say to honor and respect what everybody else does, and I don't think that that you know 
I haven't seen any evidence that, you know, that that happened. It's sort of a, you know, get out there, and if you screw up, you'll hear about it. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything on this? So right. I would agree. I would agree, Mr. Chair, on the orientation piece, just to see, you know, exactly what the process is, the budget process, how it's determined, department by department, and, you know, that way we would at least have a little bit of a better idea because it isn't in our hands, and it's, you know, yeah, well, and, and we're really, I mean, well, look, peripherally. When, uh, in other other places, you know, yeah. that I've lived, right, you know, uh, I've always been involved in the budget process, and that means you have. Responsibility, and when the and, and when the voters say to you, you know, well, you know, how are you spending our money? Well, yeah, they're, well. they're talking to the people that they voted for to, to do that. They they assume that they're doing that, but they don't. That doesn't happen here, and it it has a lot to do with the charter. And when uh, I I believe I'd suggested this to the charter review committee, but I never heard anything more about it, as far as looking at. You know, say revising the way uh, that uh, the, you know, let's say the responsibility for applying budgets and uh, let's say management of, uh, of budgets you know, are, are, are done. Okay. Um, anything else on this? Okay. Number three: uh, suggested questions to be sent to state personnel with regard to board activities on creating private well testing regulation for existing wells. You still have a copy of what I, of the questions that I submitted, right? Would you read those questions to folks? And then uh, let's say if you have anything to add to it. Uh, we don't have them on hand. Oh, you don't? Okay. Hand, no. I, I had submitted some questions with regard to interval testing. And, uh, and I believe that uh, in the last correspondence I got from uh, uh, Terry, uh, uh, there was that, uh, uh, she said she had talked to, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, somebody up at the county, Boyd? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, must have been. Does he have George Hoyfeld his job? Mm, no. Or something like that. Is is Sean O'Brien does. Yeah. Yeah, I know that Sean yeah. O'Brien, but I'm talking about the part where he's, uh, the management of Jan the, uh, the, the uh, lab. Lab. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um, you, you've gotten some questions from him. He did respond to some of Terry's emails. She forwarded that meeting okay. to me at the end of the day. Do yes. you folks have any questions that we should be submitting to this uh, group? Yeah. Just one thing that the time frame for testing on public water should be established. And my reasoning for this it's your first detection of pollution. If it's coming from their site where they're testing, or another site that the flume is pulling it through, but mm -hmm. that's your first avenue of knowing what's going on. To me, it's a good idea. So why don't we add that to the questions as to how you know how, how do we integrate the uh, <coughs> let's say the uh, what are called the observation of public uh, water uh, resource and whether or not they have an opinion as to how do you identify the connection between public, let's say, uh, the potential pollution uh, of a public water source to uh, private well use. Remember when we had this, the, was it the John's, was it the, it was in uh, Mashpee, was it John's? Yeah. Yeah, uh, where, you know, uh, where that, you know, that sort of screwed up the whole, you know, the whole plume in that point. And I don't think we ever, they, they, at that time, I don't think they ever looked at that. I mean, as far as the connection part of it. Correct, but if we set a time, not us or whoever is going to do it, a time frame, in other words, every one year, two year, three year, a test every well, or when their anniversary date mm -hmm. comes up, there's your flag that shows they do the same thing at the base on the plumes coming out here yeah, and we did the same we well. did the same thing in the lower cape when you know when there was some question of uh, uh, you know see installing wells in order to do what I'd call a an area test to see whether or not a plume that had been Travis. identified down there you know had been spread yeah yeah so that connection I think is, is a you know is, is an important one and perhaps they have some you know some suggestions on how to look at that 
So is that a time frame for the public water supply wells or the Pu private wells? Well, public, pr private, excuse okay, me, because so the they already the do the public Yes, wells. okay, so time frame for the private uh, water. Private okay. wells. Yeah, right. and, and I think that, you know, we, that seems to be an important part of it because if you take a look at the national recommendations, uh, it, it's a much shorter interval than I would have expected. Um, but in any case, um, <clears throat> the, the concern that, that you know, Dusty has expressed is, uh, and one that I share is that the evidence of uh, uh, was it, uh, salinity that uh, it seems to be acceptable doesn't take into account that as you, uh, as you use up the water that's in a private well access, uh, you increase the density of the, you know, of whatever particular matter is present there. And over time, I, I think that, you know, that's something that I have great concern because if at the initial point, it's, it's X, that as you reduce the amount of, uh, let's see, resource that you have, it becomes X minus something, you know, it, you know as far as, you know, excuse me, X plus something, you know, as far as what, you know, what, what could happen. Bob, well, you that, that's if you have a finite supply of the resource. Yeah. <clears throat> but if you don't, if you have ever, you know, constantly renewing <clears throat> a resource, then you don't have to worry about that, I wouldn't think. Oh. But, but I know what you're saying. So in those cases where, where you do have a finite amount of water, per se, mm -hmm. then you would have to be concerned with that. Of course. Yeah. I, I'm reminded that uh, when I used to teach fifth grade science, yes. uh, uh, one of the trick questions was how much water do we have from you know s since the beginning of the world and it, we, we have all of it yeah. <laughs> because it, it hasn't gone away right. yeah but yeah uh, and, and that's uh, you know that, that's something that uh, uh, we we use groundwater we don't have a reservoir right so uh, the, the, uh, it's, you know the identification of groundwater is very important. Do you have any comments, Barbara, on that? Yeah, I just think as we're thinking about like creating a private well testing regulation, like for you know as a board, I also just you know what I've read and I you know correct me if I'm wrong is that it's up to the, whoever has the well to do the testing. I do want to just double check as we're thinking about writing the regulation. And Dusty, you'd probably remember. I believe Ice Swim is responsible for testing certain people's wells, so I want to just make sure Ice we're keeping swim, that yeah. in our in the back of our head oh, yeah. as we're writing the regulation because I, they are required to do certain people's wells. So I just want to, like, okay. make and, sure and make sure that we you know that we uh, make that differentiation in those questions that we understand that there's different levels of responsibility that exist. But the but the point is that we have a and, and this is a complaint when I was on the Cape Cod Commission too. We put all this energy and time into the initial, uh, say, uh, initial evaluation, and then there's no follow-up. Correct. Yeah. So and this, I government. think this is what we're trying to do, right? That's government. Yeah. Okay. It's a great idea, but we haven't got the funds to go through with it. Uh, au contraire. <laughs> as, as, I, as, I, as I remember working. Uh, in uh, nuclear power plants, uh, they never had any money for maintenance until they had an outage, mm -hmm. and then the money comes out of the walls. Okay, so by putting regulations in place, let's say for, you know for this kind of an activity, we're showing some evidence of trying to be prepared, uh, and we could, and this is something we should discuss more. We we could put it on a recommended voluntary basis. That you know the people would do, and um, perhaps we get some support from the commercial side, where you know where people would offer to do it, in, in order to make people feel safe. It'd be interesting to know how many commercial wells you have. Well, in, it, in Bourne. Okay, if there's golf if, course, there's 8,500 dwelling units. Okay, and I was told <laughs> that we only had 2,500 wells. Of, of houses that were on ho wells in the vicinity, about 2,500? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, get, we, <clears throat> we sort of got a ballpark figure of what, you know, what we're dealing with. And perhaps um, by, at, you know, after we have the meeting with the state, you know, perhaps they could, uh, you know, give us some evidence of uh, what level of concern we should, you know, we should share with the people, you know, which is part of having them come down, you know. 
Correct. Because uh, as, as smart as we all are, we're all volunteers, and we're not. Oh, we don't get paid to think. <laughs> So we I'm don't thinking have, double, part of the budget issue is to double our salary, right? <laughs> we don't have an existing well regulation now then? We have one for accepting a well, okay, but none for managing the Correct. well. Correct. No follow-up. Is no there follow -up. a draft model regulation that the state offers? Yeah. Yeah, and, and that we had some questions for them yeah. in order to see how we could modify it to make it you know, viable here. Okay. And that's the point. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, Having heard that, are there any other questions you might have? No. Okay. okay. So we're ready to go forward to set the date up, right? Sounds good. All right. Okay. Let's see. Oh, uh, the other thing that we wanted to ask was any any uh, thing about since they're coming down on watershed permitting. I think you suggested that. Did you have any specific questions you wanted to ask about that? Uh, no, I didn't. No. Just did I, did I, about the watershed permitting, I didn't. I didn't bring that up today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I didn't think they had finished all the regulations yet. Well, the final. I I think that the regulations. Excuse me. Okay. Well, the yeah, the I think the point you were making oh. at the time was. Okay, if they have anything more to say about it, you know, uh, you know, we ought to hear about it since they're coming down. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. I, that, I think that's what we Yeah, right. I just want a kind of an overview thing. And yeah. have How is it going? Questions. You know, uh, what's right. it look like? They, you know, do they have any plans of speeding up, slowing down? You know, those, those sorts of things. Yeah, okay. what's been effective? What's the not. regulations are in effect. Um, they have extension dates for the new construction requirements, but that's the only. And also, um, they haven't come out with the list of best available technologies. Um, so they haven't come up with the, the helpful documents yet, but the regulations are in effect and have okay, started. Well, I think we so want to hear more about the is, helpful documents. Ian, is there any data to sh support what, you know, the, the, the regulation, mm -hmm. you know, the effect of the efficacy of the regulation as, you know, cur currently? <clears throat> yeah. I think that's it. that's that's yeah. all. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. General um, overview of yeah. how to go forward, essentially. Yeah. Right. What's been the best practice? What's working? What yeah. might not be working? What might need yeah. improvement? They they must have a, evidence of some you know some experience at this mm -hmm. point. Okay. Um, so with that, the next item is discussion mm -hmm. of board operations and procedures. Um, with regard to. Uh, I have to speak on this first. Okay. With regard to uh, making decisions uh, with regard to uh, either making up an agenda or rescheduling, okay. there are two things that, are, that I'm personally guided by. One, um, if, for example, in the, uh, in, in the examination of a procedure, uh, we're asked for a continuance, for example, because uh, the applicant has discovered that he's not prepared to go forward. Um, I don't think that that needs, you know, to be brought before the board. However, if there is a an application for a continuance that has in it uh, what I call questionable elements with regard to the reason, I think that that does have to be brought before the board. Okay, because uh, because that comes up with the issue of treating all applicants in uh, say identically. So that's you know that's how I you know uh, how I view with it. Now, having said that part, uh, do you have any opinion as to h how we conduct our business uh, with regard to anything that uh, you know with regard to? Um, operations and procedures I don't I have no problem with how it's been going right. it's a case-by-case -case basis and uh, you know if we feel like I think we should we should grant it continuances in that case where someone's trying to make an effort to make sure they comply with the regulations and get you know do the right thing in the end but <clears throat> yeah we're basically happy with the way things have been going along 
Okay. So, um, you know, essentially, uh, you, you understand, you know, I have a great belief in transparency, okay, and that um, to me, transparency means that everybody knows what's going on, and it doesn't look like there's been stuff done without, you know, without the whole board's involvement, or at least uh, giving them an opportunity to say, you know, why did you do that? After a vote, do your job unless you have all the information. Right. And I certainly would be in favor of any applicant that said that he wasn't ready to go forward, because that'd be wasting our time, and he, you know, he'd be risking, let's say, an outcome that uh, you know would would not, let's say, answer his needs. Right. What do you think, Barbara? Um, I think um, you make really good points. I think what happens though often is people kind of dump things at the health department, it gets accepted and they're missing information and they're struggling and trying to gather information and constantly calling people. Like I think maybe the first thing is we don't accept applications that aren't complete. Like somebody scans through it, if you don't have it, you don't accept it because I think that's what's happening this is not a lot of consistencies in the packets we're getting um, you know I would say because applicants aren't giving it or they're used to doing things a certain way like I think it would be helpful and maybe this is a good time to reset is like figure out a way that you know before it comes to us it doesn't even come to us or get on the agenda or be even stamped accepted like you don't accept it. Like I've been to departments in the town, they won't even take it if you don't have everything checked off. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's what we have to start doing, be, be more strict because we're getting, more often than not, I feel like we turn people away because we say you didn't do this or you didn't, you know, it says clearly on nitrogen loading, you're checking off, you know, if you don't meet this, you need to supply it. I haven't seen one that's ever supplied it, you know, since we did the thing and I think you know, so maybe that's the first line of defense is coming up, like making sure we have that packet and you guys don't sign it in. Other departments don't. You know, you go to the building department or another department, they won't take it if it's not complete. Um, and then, two, I think it's helpful, too, is maybe we do have some workshop with the team, you know, with the group, just to come up with, you know, what should that packet, the real packet be, and then have a meeting of the minds of, like how are we interpreting regulations? Because the health department, you know, we have a lot of new regulations that I'm not sure are even being enforced right now. You know, like title transfer reg and, you know, how are people being notified if there's a sale, they're supposed to check the house or you, you drive around and I guess there's lots of new construction, but how are they building their houses? We've never even seen their names come before us. You know, um, you know so I think, and that's the other thing, and Caitlin, you know, maybe you can talk about this a little bit more, like we talked about the e-permitting, mm -hmm. because I don't think there's a meeting of the mind of what we decided on a regulation. So, so the, the regulations that should be followed, and I'm not saying you guys aren't doing it, I'm just speaking out loud, is how we interpret it, the Board of Health, and the health department should be like enforcing how we interpret it. I just feel like a lot of things are, um, like we might not be in it's gonna the way. get worse yeah so that's all I think like I, I it's like a good time to be so much more collaborative like you stepped up you know Ter you know I don't know Terry's on a leave of absence and um, Terry's on vacation oh now she's on vacation yeah. oh, okay yeah bona but. fortuna uh, a, a, a via Gio Secura but it's a good opportunity to like work together now like it's a new year there's a lot of new things coming out like we want to make your life easy too. Like we don't want you guys to be like having people beaten, you know, calling you every day because they didn't do their, they didn't give you what you wanted. So that's all. I just think it'd be great to have like, you know, be more collaborative and like go through those new regs on how like if somebody comes to you, you just say no. That's not how it works to somebody. Or if they don't like it, they can request to come before us. But mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know. I wonder if you people typed up or printed out a whole set, a permit all filled in as a sample 
to give to the applicant when they walk in, can you please make sure everything confirms conforms to this? Like the like a map, like for the variance packages. Correct. So yes, we do have like a, a checklist. Uh, just whether people that, yeah. actually they check it off if it's in that packet or not. I mean, we do scan through it. Um, most people, you know, don't think everything applies to them, obviously. Um, so we do try and scan through it before we ever comes to you guys. But obviously, some things get missed. So, um, some things, I'm. You know what I'm more concerned of. But maybe we make a packet that everything applies. Okay, we like, can also like, make it so, like, I can send you that checklist, and you guys can go through and yeah. tell me what you think is missing or what needs to be added, something like that as well. So. Well, I have to say that there's a certain absolute quality to an application for a permit. Uh, I'm re I'm recalling in the dreaded private sector, I was a, uh, a rights and I had to deal with the rights and permits for. Uh, transmission and distribution at, at Boston Edison. And the one time that I took somebody's word for he had everything done and had the crew show up, the permit wasn't there. Okay, and uh, I, I heard about it for a long time afterwards. So um, if somebody is applying for a permit, the benefit of getting the permit is the applicant. The fact that he hasn't, if the application is not complete, and my recollection is all the, all the applications that we have refused have been as a result of the application not being complete, that all the information that was required was not there. And it wasn't a case of it not being available. It just wasn't there. So that is an indication that there has not been, let's say, uh, what I would call uh, the oversight, because it would be my opinion that whatever is presented to us is complete. And your, the recommendation is, because it is presented to us, is that it's, it, it is acceptable and we're being encouraged to take uh, your recommendation and go forward with it. But if we're finding things in there that, uh, un, let's say, that would not be reasonably covered by your review, then I think that's where the area of concern comes in. At least, that, I mean, that's, that's the way I look at it. So anyway, there, you know, there's that. So you're going to send the checklist. Why don't you send the checklist to all of us? Yeah. Because all of us are responsible for, let's say, for participating in it. So uh, you know, that that is a, you know, an area that you know we all should be concerned with. Um, let's see, what other procedures are we uh, looking at? Uh, oh, the um, one of the procedures on is on public comment, is that. Uh, it has to be reinforced that public comment is just to hear information and not to respond to it because it's, it is not on the agenda. Okay. And, um, and, and unless and until it is put on the agenda, then, uh, you know, then uh, we are obligated not to respond to it because that, you know, that would basically give uh, people coming in off the street an opportunity to set our agenda and we're supposed to set you're supposed to set that up, um, and and the other the other part, you know, while we're talking about it, is the uh, uh, what, what what do we expect from the health agent's report? And I noticed that it didn't it might might have slipped off here. What what is it that we expect from the health agent's report? What what kind of information do we want on that? The variances, the differences, the nitrogen counts, double check and all that, and any other issues of that nature. But it doesn't just apply to septic systems, it applies to everything. Mm -hmm. there's a, I was amazed at what we're responsible for the Board of Health, the scope of all the things. and. Uh, you know, when I got called, and would I go to a necropsy? Sure, I'll go. I didn't know that was under us. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's so with the piggeries. Yeah. No. Well, you can have the piggeries. It was <clears throat> enough for me to deal with the Jonah Whale. There. Don't blubber about that. I won't. <laughs> but what the board or they have to do is once all the right new regulations are out and enforced, 
are you going to be inundated with all the new upgrades and everything for systems for everything and you're going to well if they enforce that 1000 foot rule 500 foot rule and all that you're talking a lot of systems you know and it's very easy to make a mistake if you get bombarded by outside contractors and engineers that are you going to be hurting for help Eh, you don't want to answer that. Okay, well, That's what route the town well, takes if you know you guys have supported a watershed permit. So, okay, well, there's some there's something else involved. You know, to support what you know what Dusty's saying is that uh, you may not need what I would call permanent help, but you may need short term help. So, um, and it brings up the point about uh, if regulations need to be uh, updated. It would be very useful to find out what the you know what staff thinks should be the priority of effort with regard to the you know the revision of uh, you know of regulations as we go forward. Uh, if the regulations are in place for uh, you know uh, you know uh, for dealing with some of the wastewater problems, and and you look you look at our present regulations and believe that they need to be updated. Then perhaps this is the you know the uh, perhaps a, a work plan for us to address the a priority of effort would be very helpful because who would be in a better position let's say to make a recommendation than professional staff with regard to what you know where uh, how we should uh, manage our work in order to let's say uh, in, uh, let's say in, in order to uh, efficiently update you know, the issues that are facing us. So you're looking for like a staff recommendation on priority lists of what regulations need to be updated? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Can I ask one other thing? Is the young lady who was here last summer coming back? We will have a different. Different one? Because yes. the one we had last year was excellent. I mean, that report was, was so super. Oh, um, like the annual report that Vivica did? Oh, yeah. So she's never been our summer sanitarian that we usually have with the county. Vivica was an intern with just the town. Mm -hmm. um, she currently works with DNR when she's not at school. Oh. Yeah. She started in the TA's office, then worked at the building department, then the health department. <clears throat> Bounces around. Mm -hmm. What you ought to be thinking, then, of what this new person is going to be doing. Mm hmm Well, again, that would be something that would be very, the priority of effort thing that is something that I think is very important so that uh, we're not, you know, it's like looking at a whole mass of things and not knowing where, you know, where to begin. And if we have this, if we have a professional recommendation on it, I think it would facilitate us actually doing this stuff you know, to, uh, to make sure it gets done. Um, there's the... Uh, Okay, is there anything else on procedures? No. I think so. Okay. Um, when is Terry coming back? March 11th is her last. March 11th. Okay. Um, and you'll and you'll transmit this yeah. to mm -hmm. her. Um, okay. I don't apparently I slipped up and I didn't have the um, I had nothing to it. report for you, so hmm? I had nothing new to report to you guys. This I week, like your so. style, kid. Yeah. I'm glad you're on the team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay um, public comment on non-agenda items, and I have, um, uh, for the benefit of people who might be interested in um, joining the Board of Health, uh, both myself and and Dawn are not running for re-election, so um, uh, just be aware of that. And and this is the time when you would put in your papers to, in order to apply. So that public announcement should give an incentive to people who might be interested in going forward. Okay, and let's see, comments from the board with regard to future agenda items. Nothing from me, Barbara. Um, I'd like to maybe even, as we're talking about the checklist, and this might be a good time to talk about it, 
is we do need a meeting of the mind because there's a different interpretation on those nitrogen loading cal calculations from the Board of Health to the Health Department. Um, we've always used Upland. It's been publicly said in meetings with the um, select board what are what we've done historically and we've strayed from that so I think we need to you know have a discussion on because the regulations the interpretation of those nitrogen loadings are ours um, our interpretation and we should to be to your point bill consistent you know we want to treat everybody the same we're treating people different now we're more lenient now on our nitrogen loading calculations. We're not even using Upland <laughs> anymore, and that's not fair, and it doesn't help the environment. Um, and then just to kind of talk about what we think are some other of those regulations that we talked about, like what our interpretation is. So it'll be a good time to do it when we're going through kind of like the packet anyway, because we do need a meeting of the minds because we don't want to be in conflict <laughs> with each other or with the health department. So those are just my thoughts, you know, just well, making sure. It seems to me that an appropriate time to have this is when we have these people come down from the state, uh, you know, well, to, let's say to talk that, about. You know, but that has, that doesn't, yeah. that's, it's, it's our interpretation of the regulations. We can be, <clears throat> we're stricter. Some of our regulations are stricter. So it's not, um, and most of them are, mm -hmm. like a lot of our regulations. Okay. The, well, it's not, it's not about, I mean, we wrote the regulations. We recreated them. It's just what I'm saying is this not a meeting of the minds amongst a consensus among our group. That's okay. all. That's all I want to talk about. Well, I don't I, want to ask a third party because I want it to be our consensus. No, I, I wasn't intending to ask a third oh. party. I just said that when we have them come down, perhaps that would be there would be room on the agenda at that time because this oh, would be I in see. March. Oh, okay? I see. I apologize. Yeah, I misinterpreted. And I listen to every word there, Barbara. <laughs> all right. So uh, if you could put that on the as an agenda item on that. Um, that March meeting? Like a, like a workshop to go over current regulation interpretations? Yeah, something like that. I mean, it might be, that well, might be, be busy. Well, be specific. Thing. Say yeah. nitrogen, look, we have a, a problem with nitrogen calculations and we want one set of rules. Yeah. Okay. And then the other one that I want to talk about is the addition conversion, that alteration one, because technically none of that should be approved in e-permitting, anybody doing a remodel or an addition, because you guys don't have the authority to do that according to our regulation. But a lot of things are going through e-permitting that should come before us. Well, is e-permitting e reviewed by staff for completion of the application? No, oh, sorry, you can answer that, Caitlin. Then. Um, so uh, for like building permits? Yes. So the building permit is, um, you know, released for review by all departments and um, they give feedback whether there's something missing for department requirements um, and before occupancy is granted, those requirements need to be um, yeah, but at that time it's too late because the people have already done everything before putting in a septic because our new regulation, like I said, the board of the, the health department has no authority to so approve So I that. cannot halt a building permit either. So Ken will approve the building permit whether I all my issues are there or not. Um, he has to release that permit within, I think it's 30 days. Oh, okay. And then he can hold occupancy for our issues, and that's the only thing that he can do. All right, do. so that's a good thing yeah. to understand mm -hmm. too. You know, so... Um, that's something to understand too. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so like it, how the process works. It doesn't go from department to department. A checklist before they're issued a building permit. It does, but we have a deadline for how long we can take. And the so thirty those days. Are, so yeah. can you so just deny things, it? If it, if can you say deny? I can, but he can still issue the permit, and then they'll have to fix what's the what I denied it denied. for before occupancy, essentially. And then could you deny something because we have a board of health regulation yeah. that says they have to do a certain? Yes. They mm -hmm. have to come before the board and update upgrade their septic. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So perhaps at this, uh, where we're looking at the nitrogen calculations, perhaps we, uh, you could give us a. Uh, what you're recommending is a design for, let's say, supporting what you know what Barbara's asking about. Mm -hmm. Is that would that make sense? Yeah, like yeah. a little tutorial of what's happening, just so yeah. we know that, like, yeah. so yeah. so that we all understand. Yeah, exactly. Are on the same page for stuff. 
Okay. Besides. Anything else? No. I like that idea. I saw it. And uh, we ha do we have minutes? We do not, no. We do not have minutes. Um, I was, uh, all of us have received the, um, uh, the extract from mass.gov with regard to uh, the creation of minutes. And what I was thrilled to see was that they agree with me about timing minutes should be um, uh, within 30 days or at least not past three meetings. Okay. So uh, I, I think that, that, that you know, that's a, a great start, and I would recommend that you all keep that and follow on to that. Mm -hmm. because, Put it uh, in your Bible and something like that. Although I've been reading numbers in the Bible lately, and I'm kind of concerned about how many people are getting knocked off. You know, that's another. <laughs> that's something for, for a different different. I got venue. better things to do. <laughs> okay. Well, enough of this frivolity. And uh, thank you very much for coming to, uh, today and being patient enough to listen to all of the things that we had to cover. <clears throat> uh, if only we could turn the micro, turn the camera around, so you could see this vast <laughs> audience of. Uh, of uh, interested folks in our business. Okay, so at this point, I'll make a motion, motion to adjourn. Is so there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. By roll call? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dusty? Bobby? Yes. And I. Thank you very much. Stephen.